Hi everyone, my name is Angela Savaleta. Hi, my name is Yara. So my name is Katrina. My name is Derek. My name is Maduvan Kasi. And I'm William Song. We are six of your teaching assistants this semester for CSC A48 Intro to Computer Science 2 at UTSC. So let's first get into everyone's introductions. I'm in my first year of master's in computer science. I just finished my undergrad in software engineering co-op and I did a major in mathematics. I am in second year and I'm taking a, I'm pursuing a computer science specialist, software engineering specialist and a statistics major as well. I'm a fourth year computer science student at UTSC. But let's just say it's my fourth year here. I'm currently in the computer science specialist program for a software engineering stream. I'm also in the math specialist comprehensive stream. I fell in the math ditch along my computer science journey. So I was taking a bunch of math courses. Um, I'm a second year, uh, I guess, stats specialist uh, in the machine learning and data mining program. I'm also half in a major in psychology, so I'm still balancing that out a bit. It's kind of confusing. And I'm a senior undergraduate specializing in computer science entrepreneurship. Over the last three semesters in which I've been teaching this course, I get asked a lot about how does one succeed in A48. So I asked my fellow TAs here for their advice. So first things first, what would you tell first year you? So something I did in first year that it, right now I would tell my first year me to stop doing is comparing myself to others. Um, no matter what achievement I was able to accomplish in first year, I immediately diminished it because I was so overwhelmed with posts and how you know everyone around me is probably doing so much better, like this is nothing. Um, I really let myself down and I wasn't able to celebrate any of the good things that I was able to accomplish in first year. And, you know, now that I'm in second year and I've grown a little bit wiser, I realized that, you know, I really missed out on so much pride in myself and feeling really accomplished because I was always comparing myself to others. Don't be scared of asking questions because coming from a male dominant program, sometimes you don't wanna show um, that you don't understand the concept or that you're having some trouble understanding a certain um, topic, but everybody um, is struggling on first year to catch up on trying to find better ways to learn. So I will tell my first year self to don't be scared of asking questions. I'd probably say get more sleep. Uh, a lot of first year students and especially coming just from high school, you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna stay up to like 4 a.m. and then go to that 8 a.m. lecture and I'll be completely fine. Now I'm gonna do that for a month and I'll still be fine. Um, fun fact, that doesn't work. You aren't fine after like a week and then you kind of crash. And so it's really bad for your mental health. Make sure you get sleep. Make sure that you try to start those assignments ahead of time because they're probably going to take more time than you actually expect especially in a48 talking to first year me i'd say probably the biggest piece of advice is don't get complacent especially going into like second semester first year it's when you take a48 uh it, the courses do tend to get harder and not only that uh, especially if you have background coming into computer science uh, a 8 might have uh, been stuff you've known for the most part uh, and A48 starts out the same way, but things build uh, at a very fast pace and uh, not keeping up, uh, falling behind in certain weeks uh, because it, everything in CS is cumulative. Uh, that's, that stuff like piles up really, really quickly and adding like that to your other uh, second semester courses, A, A37, A22, uh, it all uh, tends to come at you way too quickly. So uh, obviously I think the biggest piece of advice is just uh, even if things are going pretty smoothly, make sure they keep staying smoothly. Don't like fall off because it's hard to get back on track. Yeah. So what I tell first year me is the fact that you got to make sure you practice early on and like do all the practice questions for, for all your courses, like do the exercises for A48 and like the early lecture exercises because it builds up over time. And so like you don't really see that until a major evaluation comes in the course. And then you'll be like, oh, damn, I really don't know anything. Or you'll be like, ah, yes, I know, I'm confident I knew this stuff. Like the major evaluations in the course like serve to tell you if you really kept up with the content. 
And like, if you didn't, it can be like, a, like, like stepping on a landmine. <laughs> like you're just torn apart and then you like have to like speed up to catch up for the final so that you do well. So that's what I just tell my, uh, my first yourself is the fact to constantly keep up with all the questions given by professors and do them on my own time. Cause like uh, in the second term, a lot of the courses that the uh, students will be taking and for A48 specifically, they're not spectator courses where you can't just watch and like understand. You have to like try uh, the questions on your own and try figuring out the implementation and how to do it. Cause th then you'll be able to build confidence in yourself that you understand the content. A lot of TA saw that a strong understanding originated from practice. Let's go back to Derek. So like the only thing I can say is just like, uh, just do practice questions in the courses and to like maybe ask uh, the uh, profs, instructors, or TAs if, if their solution to the exercises is right. Do extra exercises and practice more. If you don't understand something, just keep practicing until you get it because especially in programming courses, the concepts are cumulative. So you're never going to stop using a certain topic. So if you're gonna be here for a while, you're gonna be taking a lot of courses in C, for example. So having a pretty well-defined understanding of C and pointers, everything related to C, um, it will be good if you spend enough time to make sure that you have the concepts down and that you have a pretty good understanding of everything. Don't be scared of taking more time than other students because again, everybody has their own learning pace. One small thing you can try doing is with A48 in particular, right? Uh, sometimes when evaluation comes up, you won't have enough, you'll, you'll, you'll try to think of like, how can I prepare for the midterm, the final, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll realize, how do I do it? Cause like I've noticed with uh, CS course in particular, like it's hard to like uh, continue, uh, like, uh, con uh, like prep more and more for the course. Like something that I would try to do uh, on some occasion is just like come up with questions for myself and try to see if I could answer them. Like come up with, uh, in particular, A48, like see if I could program this simple function uh, that I would like think of a, a function and what, and what I wanted to do, what the input for it would be, and then I would try to program it out right there and see if I could do it or not. Uh, right, right off the top of my head. And like, I think like trying to come up with questions and then solving them or like uh, implement them is like a good way to test yourself in particular to A48 that you know the concepts and you'll reach that point like near the end of the course or before an evaluation where you wanna study more and test yourself but you don't know how and you'll probably have exhausted potentially uh, some of the assignments or you'll, you won't see like uh, the lecture exercises as, as helpful from the uh, previous weeks. So just try to come up with questions for yourself to and, and sort of just test yourself on the content. Like you should be able to evaluate whether it's like roughly right, somewhat right, or just like you don't know any it at all. And that can serve as like a benchmark for like what you need help and assistance on that you can go to office hours for. The next most common question we get asked is what did you find hardest? about A48? I think for A48, a lot of students get scared before even trying. I think that's the biggest struggle. A lot of people think that this course is extremely hard and they already come with a mentality that they're gonna struggle a lot. But if you take your time, read over the notes, come to tutorials, come to office hours, you're going to have a much better time. Don't assume that a concept is gonna be hard. Just try it out. In general, as soon as people start looking at pointers, they start getting scared. By far the most uh, most common problem is just not understanding pointers properly. I think pointers show up way too often in C. I mean, if you have, at some point, everything ends up being a pointer. Basically once we, I think we introduce pointers pretty early, but once we do make sure like your grasp on them is completely solid, like as foundational as possible, because and the rest of the course is all built upon it, right? It just like ties in my previous point, don't get complacent. Everything is pointers. If you understand pointers and double pointers and delimited pointers, whatever, like understand everything as clear as you can, as soon as everything comes up, everything else just kind of falls into place. But like, if you don't understand that basic concept, like 
and you kind of wing your way through the first couple of tests, like you'll stop winging at some point. Probably near the end of the course. Um, I think that happens in a lot of courses though. So being able to keep pushing through those last hard sort of topics, it's kind of a way to finish off the course. Um, so definitely study those trees. I know you don't know what I mean, and I'm not talking about nature, but make sure you study those trees, you understand the different types, um, and definitely the sorts. I feel like that'll really come in handy with future courses coming up. Uh, so yeah, just keep pushing through at the end, because I know it's really hard to motivate yourself after like three months of hard work, um, but you're almost there. and Don't stop yourself then. And some students are really used to studying in a way that unfortunately does not work for computer science. I'll let Yara get into what you should not do. Memorizing code or memorizing what's in the notes word for word without being able to apply the concepts you've memorized to different situations. Um, you know, sometimes we see certain uh, implementations of data structures um, that's coded out for you in the notes. And you just think that as long as you memorize that, you're set, you know how to implement a linked list whenever, wherever. But the second you get put in a midterm where it asks you to implement a linked list in a completely different scenario, you blank out because you've only memorized how to do it in a certain situation, in a certain um, like example. And so one area where I see people struggle with is the fact that they're just memorizing without actually taking the time to work through uh, exercises and really think about how to approach problems um, without having to memorize the answers. And the last question was, what are some small changes you can make to your study habits that will benefit you? First one that's probably pretty tempting, uh, especially now that you're at home, don't study on your bed. What's even better is if you can study outside of your bedroom. I know some people, they might not have that option, um, but even if you're like, I don't know, at a, uh, at a different table or in a different room, you can put yourself in that school working mindset so that you're not just relaxing in your room. So you separate your personal life from your working life. And that I think is one of the biggest things, um, especially being able to have time to relax. That's really important um, versus knowing you need to study. So this one might seem a bit counterintuitive, but I think the best piece of advice I've gained uh, over my degree is just not taking notes when the teacher is talking which, uh, you know, it, it seems counterintuitive, but explain my point. Uh, uh, I find, especially in first year, a lot of people are like, yo, I'm going to I'm gonna get on this. I'm going to be taking notes at all times. I'm going to write down everything the professor is saying. But really all you end up doing is they're committing most of your like thought processes to writing everything down as fast as possible and you're not spending the time to understand it. Uh, what I find worked best for me, like even in in-person classes, was not taking notes at all and just f really understanding what the professor is saying because that's what they're really here for, right? Otherwise, they just provide the text to you uh, on a document. You can just read it over whenever. Being able to understand on the fly and ask questions when you don't, and then going to review uh, notes posted online and then taking notes later, I found to be much more effective. And now in this online environment, like you can just rewatch the video. Like you literally can watch it twice or pause or whatever. So I think the best way to study, uh, as unintuitive as it may seem, is just to focus on the content and not... Uh, the memorization or the note taking or whatever, you know. If you don't understand something, come to your TA, come to profs and ask questions. Don't be scared of asking questions. So one thing I've been doing to really get me focused on what I'm doing without being distracted is actually having some sort of self-control app. There's actually an app called self-control, which, you know, blocks you from going on any site you choose for any time that you set it to, which forces you to basically not procrastinate on any of your social media accounts and really just spend the time you allotted to study. So that's one thing I definitely encourage if you think that you um, often use social media and procrastinate on there, um, get self-control and <laughs> it's called self-control. Get self-control and Hopefully it'll help you um, limit your social media use when you're studying. But by far, 
this was the most common advice. Writing out all your goals for the day, every day on like a little notebook. Like I, like I have this schedule right here, this notebook. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. Like I put like all my due dates, everything I have to do down on there. And so like, it helps me keep organized because like I forget things really quickly. Like I'll be thinking one thing, then like a while later I'll get distracted and completely forget. And if it's like an assignment that, or like oh, something else important that can be pretty concerning. But like this helps me uh, time manage. Especially when it comes to managing the A48 workload against other courses you might be taking in the same semester. And, you know, it's totally understandable. Some things, sometimes some courses come up and, you know, you need to prioritize some assignments or quizzes coming up over, you know, some lecture material. But it's so important to stay on top of your work and attend lectures regularly because the rate at which you start falling behind is just so quick the second you start, you know, holding back a little. So that's one area of where I see students struggle. Try breaking it down to smaller set steps and then setting designated times that you need to finish those. So if you have like a big project that's due in three weeks, don't wait until like the last week to start on it. Maybe it has like different functions that you can start on. So be like, oh, okay, by the end of the first week, I'll finish at least three or four functions. And then the next week you keep going. And then finally, like the last week, you can just look over it. So I think being able to break it down, the workload in all of your different courses, and then being able to go through each one, scheduling yourself. Make a plan of not only what you wanna accomplish for, like for your courses, but also for yourself. What are things that you can do um, to feel accomplished every day? You know, even small tasks, just write like a little task of like replying an email or make a piazza post, those little things, once you complete it and check it off from your checklist, it's gonna make you feel more accomplished. So for example, um, for tomorrow, I want to uh, finish up chapter notes, writing up my chapter notes. I want to do half of a certain assignment. Um, it's really nice to actually write those goals down because you feel so much more accomplished when you are able to check it off your list. And it really helps you know what you're doing at all times. So you're not always like, oh, I should do this and I should do another task or, and oh, I forgot to do this assignment. When you write your goals on a notebook daily, you can set up your entire schedule and you're able, you will be able to um, really complete everything you want to do over a certain span of time. As long as you try your best, you are capable of doing everything you would like to do. I hope you all found something that was helpful in here that will help you succeed in A48. So from everyone in the course, good luck, and you can always come to us for any questions.